Hello, Matthew Williams here with a quick video to say hi. It's one of my favorite t-shirts actually, should wear it more often. But um, just to say uh, the update with the barge. Um, subsequently to the attempt to buy the barge, um, which raised about 30,000 or something out of 500,000, a valiant attempt, um, but Mm, yeah, I think after the last time that the barge was uh, owned by the community, um, that went very tits up. So, um, I think anybody else who was kind of wondering whether anybody else could manage it from the community was probably a little bit put off by that, even though it was new people. And sad that that should be the case. Um, that's my feelings on why that wasn't successful. Um, I've said many times I think what the barge really needs is somebody to come along, maybe a family or somebody who actually wants to run it as a pub and has some background in, in business. Um, you know, somebody who's got a track record and, and has got the money to put up, you know, for that. But anyway, um, what I avoided discussing whilst the uh, the sale was um, potentially, you know, they were looking for the money to buy it, um, I avoided saying what I'm going to say now, which is that my feeling is that this whole business with uh, Pietro Cuomo um, it was was false. There was never any way. That, that guy purchased the building from Ian McIver. Okay, that never happened. And funnily enough, since Pietro Cuomo has disappeared back to Italy, you know, if he ever came from Italy in the first place, do we even know whether he came from Italy? <laughs> I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that guy was a buddy of Ian McIver's. And Ian McIver. Um, didn't want to be seen to be the one that shut the barge down because as we all know it's a very popular place one of the more successful pubs in Wiltshire with a large traffic of people now MacGyver could never deal with that because being a snidey uh, little twat from London um, of course you know he wanted to uh, either make the barge his thing or break it up and sell it off which is basically what he did um, he tried to do both he tried to make the barge his thing and in his ego ego brain as he told me in one of his final emails when I was basically telling him to go fuck himself um, he said that he believed that he was the best thing that had ever happened to the barge himself him he was the best thing so yeah right yeah okay so Ian MacGyver this property developer developer slash um, asset stripper from London whose only claim to fame is buying shit that is loved and shutting them down and then offering it back at ransom prices to the community to buy back what these fucking cunts have taken off them yeah um, that's his only claim to fame is being uh, an utter shitbag an utter fucking scumbag that does that sort of thing asset strips uh, things of community value and then dangles them like a carrot like you can't have this back unless you pay extortionate amounts of money ha 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 I've taken your community apart ha 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 yeah that's his only claim to fame and when it comes to whether or not he was the best thing that ever happened to the barge, uh, what, above crop circles? Yeah, above crop circles, above above music festivals and music and people that liked coming there? What, him, Mr. Asset Stripper, was the best thing that happened to the barge? Really? Okay, so then, of course, he doesn't want to be seen to be the bad guy because he was the bad guy down in Cornwall when he asset stripped... Um, the Gaia project 
look it up online if you want to go and have a look. Just type them into Google, Ian McIver, Gaia Project, yeah? And have a look at what they say about how he shut that place down, yeah? Um, it's all there on the internet, yeah? And then, of course, he buys out the cross keys in Great Bedouin, and then he shuts that down, you know? But he tries to, he tries, you see, to make it look like he's done everything he possibly can to make the, the place succeed but unfortunately you know it hasn't worked out he always tries this he tried it with um, bringing in people that he knew would fail you know it's like it's like the way the government operates you know you put a politician in that knows nothing about rail to run rail and then when it when it doesn't succeed you can blame that politician and move on to the next politician and you can just keep doing that and blame it on the individual that was never suited for that task in the first place so this is how MacGyver works he works with similar similar tactics he put in a landlord that didn't run the uh, Great Bedouin pub very well and by all accounts um, was basically uh, you know running it into the ground but that's what MacGyver wanted because that's the sort of person he allowed to go in there and he's not stupid you know he he can actually pick out the people that aren't going to you know aren't going to sort of uh, succeed now what he doesn't like what he hates are getting landlords in who do succeed you see and there were a string of those at the barge who succeeded after the community project failed yeah then new landlord went in and was doing well. Of course MacGyver doesn't want that. That isn't part of MacGyver's plan because he wants to see it fail. Yeah. So of course he gets rid of that landlord and puts in another landlord. Right. And he tries to make sure that they're even less experienced than the last lot that went in there. Now, you know, if you're watching this, landlords, this is not a criticism of you because you all did really well, which MacGyver didn't want you to do. You see, so he got somebody that had no experience in the pub trade, brings them in and he's thinking, <laughs> they're not going to do well they got no hope in hell no experience in the pub trade and they come across as kind of like wannabes yeah and that's what he that's what he did he brought these people in who had who w wanted to run the pub but he didn't think we're going to be able to do it and when they started succeeding he made it absolutely impossible for them to carry on you know raise the rent stipulate awkward conditions come in and make their lives hell you know until they wanted to leave and then get another one in and he basically worked his way through these people and and eventually he realized because the spirit of the barge actually uh brings people out of themselves these landlords who came in with very little experience actually decided we really enjoy running this place and we'd like this to succeed and then actually started excelling and once that started to happen he made it clear he wanted to get rid of them so every one of the landlords that was there made a really good attempt at it but of course they had this moron called MacGyver you know trying to f manipulate manipulate behind the scenes to make it as awkward as he possibly could for them right now <laughs> then it was obvious to him that he wasn't going to make the pub obviously fail yeah publicly fail so he just sh he just shut it down and he said right fuck this fuck this I'm selling the place yeah and he sold it to a person who was going to turn it into a restaurant an Italian restaurant yeah right and was violent and was basically a horrible pig to everyone that went in there you know he did everything within his power yeah to alienate everyone who came in through the door yeah I mean, you've only got to look on TripAdvisor for what Pietro Cuomo did, but everybody's like, you know, they only they, they don't they don't see they don't see how this works, yeah. MacGyver didn't want to be seen to be the one to close the pub down, but every manager who ever worked there would tell you this guy didn't want this place to succeed, yeah. They all said that they made it so hard for the managers to operate, yeah, that basically every manager had to leave. Then he gets this guy in, right? And he says, oh, I've sold the pub to this Italian guy. I've sold the pub to an Italian man. Yeah, he's running it now. And of course, it's a front. It's a complete and utter front, yeah? He, oh, he obviously knows this guy, yeah? He knows this guy. And right from day one, there was talk 
behind the scenes which got back to the staff about them being you know in partnership together this was not a sale this was a partnership yeah this guy was brought in for a reason yeah probably because he's a bit of muscle yeah he's going to punch a few customers and he's going to make everyone hate the pub and not want to go there i.e it's going to fail one way or another yeah in the end he ended up punching me and slamming me in the head with a with a um, piece of wood knocking me out yeah and then he did his flip then and then the pub had a legitimate reason to close because of all the problems that this guy had had so then he's gone back to Italy yeah so he's gone back to Italy so if he sold the pub to this chap right and if he as he told me in his final emails yeah MacGyver said yeah it's all paid now he's paid for the pub and it's out of my hands yeah if that was true then how come when that pub closed down the only person that was seen at the pub afterwards was MacGyver and his wife yeah who the fuck would believe right that the stupid moron would go back there right there they were keys letting themselves in looking around the place yeah and taking people in there taking people in there to show them around to sell the place now who believes at all who believes that they are actually not owners of that building why are they there why are they there why would they be there why would they have keys to the place right why there's, there's two possibilities right either the place was never actually sold in reality to Pietro Cuomo which is what we all thought right from the word go yeah it never belonged to that guy this was just a front to keep MacGyver out of the firing line because you know or two maybe Pietro did pay something towards the building and maybe it reverted back to MacGyver's ownership which if you look in the contract actually stipulated that you know obviously if all the money wasn't paid on the building that he would then become the owner again yeah and yet there he is there he is just going around the pub going oh yes isn't it terrible isn't it terrible how the grass is growing out the back and oh no, if only i own, own owned this place again i could do something with it but i can't do anything with it you know this kind of fatalistic bullshit pretense that he's putting on yeah well what do you think what do you think yeah it's actually closed now which is like the great bedwin pub the cross keys it's closed and he's trying to sell it for an inflated amount of money yeah uh well but he's not getting any aggro for it so he's managed to do what he wanted to do in the first place which was close it down and try and sell it as a house but of course he's realized now with the opposition that Pietro had for the planning he's never going to get it turned into a house so of course he's now sitting on a lemon but because he's such a stubborn little twat yeah he's not going to lower the prices and he's not going to open it back up and he's not going to allow the community to have their pub back yeah and he's just going to sit on it and he's been sitting on the cross keys in Great Bedwin for two years yeah and that has not moved and he is stubbornly trying to sell that pub as a house yeah and he's misleading people in the advertising for that pub telling them this is a this is a residential premises in the small print it's like but it's actually commercial and you'll have to run a business from it in order to live here because it's a commercial premises and he hasn't been able to convert it to residential because the locals won't allow him to do it so he's keeping the price high and he's going to sit on that premises for another two years or another five years and he will sit on that premises until he gets what he wants which is to t turn a pub into a residential premises to try and sell it for maximum money and this guy does not care what the community thinks he does not care about anyone or their or their feelings towards that pub he does not care that he lives in london and this community that is their hub that's the only pub they've got 
and it's in the summertime it was where the crop circles you know people gathered for the crop circles and loads of people used to camp right hmm? he doesn't care about that he also doesn't care that the planning was botched yeah and basically he did a load of changes to that barn which was built which is supposed to be for the community remember that barn was was given planning permission for it to be a building to be used for the community and he never let people use that building one fucking day not one fucking day did he allow that barn which was built with planning permission to be for the community not one day did that get used for the community he kept that shut yeah this is the sort of criminal backwards cunty twatty mentality that you've got from mr ian MacGyver and his fucking gormless wife fucking yeah i mean it beggars fucking belief it beggars fucking belief how people like this can operate yeah come into a community wrench the fucking guts out of it wrench their fucking pub out of the out of the fucking community and then just sit on it and he's just sitting there and it, and using the pretense of oh well it wasn't me that shut it down it was the italian you see so it's not i'm not being the bad guy because everywhere ian macgyver has gone he's left a fucking dirty snail trail a dirty fucking stinky snail trail of close it down hold the community to ransom yeah try and break it up split it into separate parts split it up fuck it up fuck it up and fuck everyone off yeah that's what he does so does anybody believe anyone believe the pretense of pietro cuomo yeah or do they believe like i do and most of the community and most of the people who went to that pub that he has always owned that pub and he still owns it now and this is just a long game he's playing a long game yeah to eventually convince people that nobody can buy the pub nobody can buy the pub yeah well of course you can come and want to buy the pub but he's not going to sell it to you for the realistic price and nobody's going to get ripped off they're not going to get ripped off so it's just going to sit there and that's what he does want to buy the pub yeah million pound yeah yeah and it's not worth a million pound it's worth five hundred thousand pounds that's the valuation fee of that pub but he wants twice the amount it's worth so of course nobody's going to buy it because everyone who's going to value the place you know anyone who's got any sense will come along with their own valuation people and say how much is this worth and they'll say well five hundred thousand yeah you know and of course he's going to sit on that and sit on it and sit on it and sit on it and sit on it until he gets what he wants five years down the line what he thinks he's going to get what he wants he thinks he's going to turn it into a residential ain't never going to happen pricko yeah you can sit on that fucking pub for donkey's years because the community will never let you have that as residential it will never happen pricko so you can sit on that fucking four hundred thousand pounds you paid for the place yeah and the hundred thousand pounds you put in to doing works a lot of which was paid for by the lottery money which you fucking kept yeah so yeah that place is worth 500 grand and that's what you'll be fucking getting for it yeah and you can sit on it as long as you fucking like yeah the community know who you are and the community know what a fucking shitbag you are Right, so I honestly don't know how you've got the nerve to show your face around the place and try and pull the shit on. But trust me, right? You can try your little. Oh, it doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to me. And your fucking wife can go mouthing off to people about w w what rubbish they should be putting in the bins, like it's got anything to do with you. Yeah, you don't own it apparently apparently you don't own it so why are you and your wife gobbing off to people about what they can and can't do in that place when it's closed down and some bloke from fucking italy apparently owns it and he's not round there telling anybody what to do so what the fuck's it got to do with you eh it's got a lot to do with you hasn't it because you actually fucking own it yes so if you own it like they say if you own it then fucking own it own it bitch because you're a little fucking bitch and i tell you what long after you fucked off from that place 
the pub will live again and you know what they'll rue the fucking day you ever fucking had your hands on it you're the best thing that ever happened to the barge you're the best thing that ever happened to the barge mate you're the fucking worst thing that's ever happened to loads of fucking communities, yeah? And the day you realise that they don't like fucking psychopaths and they don't like cunts from London with their money coming in and fucking up their communities, the day you realise that motherfucker is the day you'll probably actually learn to start fucking treating people better. So, for now, thanks very much and no, your lie didn't work, Mr MacGyver, yeah? Fuck you. That, the respect you wanted from everybody, yeah, you didn't get it, did you? Why? Because you were a cunt. So, thanks very much for watching.